personally, I really enjoy watching ranking videos. I don't tend to take them too seriously and just find it fun to see someone showcase a game's levels or bosses. These are entertaining kind of videos in my opinion, and a couple of my favorite channels that do ranking videos would be Sunburn Albino with his boss rankings and Jamie the Pain with his Mario Kart rankings. So I thought it'd be fun to do my own ranking video starting with the original Sly game, as it's one of my favorites and the only game in this series I ever go back to play. A few rules here really quick. First off, I will be ranking these levels from my least favorite to most, so it's all just my preference here. Second, I'm only looking at the platforming levels, not any of the minigame ones, as honestly, I don't like them all that much, and if they were on this list, they'd all be at the bottom, especially those racing ones. And third, I'm also excluding the final world from this list, since that mostly consists of minigame sections, and some very minor platforming with a boss. Well, that's everything, so let's get this started. While the swamp is one of my favorite locations in the game, it unfortunately has my least like level. Most of your time is spent platforming, like usual, and it's quite fun. Though the reason I have this level at the bottom is because of how annoying the ghosts get towards the end. I've gotten much better at the game over these years, but I'm still not a fan of how often and fast they respawn. Though, since this is supposed to be a spooky swamp, it is nice to see ghosts, and it's only a couple of sections in the level where they are annoying. Most of the time you will be sneaking past guards and running along thin branches, and it's very enjoyable. The end of the level to me though is only okay, as you need to keep away from enemy sights amongst these huts. This can get a little challenging when all of them end up near each other, but it's really just not a section I found to be all that great and an otherwise good level. It's the first level of the game, and as such, it's very short. Still fun though, with some areas to climb around, a nice waterfall section, and overall acts as a good introduction to the game. At the same time though, there isn't much to it, which is why it's this low. What sucks about the fourth world is how all the levels feel so similar to each other compared to the diversity of levels in the first two worlds. Don't get me wrong, the snowy mountains of China are an awesome setting. It's just that all the levels take place in this mountain, and this one doesn't really have anything that makes it stand out. It's still a solid platform experience, but just isn't very memorable to me. It's cool hanging out on rooftops, and unlike previous levels, this one feels a little more open. Climbing around on signs and machinery is a good way to take advantage of the location. Plus, the absolute highlight of this level is using the wrecking ball to crash your way through the end. It's just, oh, that's so great. I love it. Like I said before, the levels in China don't stand out much from each other, but I do like how this one uses your new invisibility in some unique ways. So this level ends up being a lot of sneaking past guards, which is nice. Making your way up and down these two towers is a good touch as well and helps make this level feel just a little more distinct. The first world in the game has levels that take place in a variety of locations, which helps make them all stand out. Here, not only is the level a personal library-like area, but it also has a bit of a gimmick to it. A lot of your time will be spent using a barrel to get past obstacles, like turrets and guards. It's an interesting idea and is pulled off well, with the only downside being how slow you move when in the barrel, which ends up affecting the whole speed of the level for me. Running around these narrow, rocky pathways really helps give a sense of height here. While this one is a very, very narrow-esque level, I think it works here to help make the enemies and hazards more of a threat. I really like going through the worn down subway cars or whatever they're meant to be. As a bonus, the colors used in the sky and background are nice and set a cool atmosphere. There are a couple of levels in the game where you are running away from Carmelita in which she is constantly shooting at you. It's all about having quick reflexes here to make sure you outspeed her shots as they destroy platforms behind you. It's all very exciting and using the fireworks on the dragon statue is a good ending to the level. 
And moving along, we have the other Carmelita chase level. This one, however, takes place on the rooftops, and honestly, I like this location more. What puts it higher up is the constant sense of movement, as opposed to Duel by the Dragon, where that momentum was hurt by the firework sections before the end of the level. In addition to that, jumping around on the rooftops creates a greater sense of danger. Overall, this is one of the best levels in the game for me. A more claustrophobic level at times, that focuses on avoiding lasers. It starts off simple, with some moving beams in a hallway, then to lasers that follow you and require some better thinking and planning to dodge, and ending with well-timed jumps on lily pads while missing some moving lasers. A short one to be sure, but still very memorable and entertaining level. Now, I've already said throughout this video a couple times that the levels in China don't really differentiate that much from each other for me, but of all those levels, this one is by far the one that stands out the most in my mind, particularly the temple with the training monkeys who for some reason, never seem to attack you. Not only that, but there are a lot of sneaking sections when out on the mountain that really make you feel like a thief sneaking your way in at the dead of night. And lastly, there are these hook swinging sections over a large bottomless pit that has stuck in my memory ever since I first played the game. It's not that different from the other levels in the fourth world, but I do quite enjoy this one. Much as the level's name implies, it takes place in a graveyard for ships, which to me is a cool concept. I think it's neat to jump around on planes and platformers, and I don't think enough games let you do that, even though these ones aren't moving. Cause this is an early level, it isn't too long, but the atmosphere here helps keep me more engaged. On top of that, there are just some odd things to look at and keep your eye out for, such as floating eyeballs in these test tubes. It's a simple but still fun level. Not enough of the levels in this game try to do something different with the platforming perspective, which is probably why this one stands out so much to me, as this level acts more like a 2D platformer, with a side view and these narrow platforms Sly is often walking across. Add to that, I also really like the location of jumping around off these balconies of the larger buildings. They even put in a few interesting sneaking sections when avoiding the spotlights. I wish there was more levels like this in the game, it's a really awesome concept that would have been better than having all of those awful, awful minigame stages. It's been a while since we've seen a swamp level, but I do love the location of these stages the most, especially the haunted-esque music that often plays in them. There are a few things here that stand out to me, like navigating your way over these falling pieces of wood. Then we have these fighter turtle creatures who you don't see that often in the game, and I always found them to be an odd enemy. Though they do help add a little extra challenge to the platforming. It's just fun jumping and climbing around in the area whether to be sneaking past guards or just to reach the end. I just find this to be a very solid level. The first world has a few of these more fiery locations, and to me, they are both the most dangerous levels of that world. Not only do we have some fire-wielding enemies, but the claustrophobic level design really helps make the fires and machines feel more threatening. To me, that's what makes this so much more fun and memorable, even if the level is kind of short. And here we have the other fiery level. This one is not quite as claustrophobic, but what makes it more distinct, and in my opinion, more entertaining to play, is how you will use the machinery to help you progress on through, like hanging on these moving hooks and using conveyor belts to move the ball in order to open up a blocked path that you can then enter. To me, it's just so much more interesting to be platforming all over these moving machines rather than going down a bunch of hallways. Yeah, even when I first played this game about six years ago, this level instantly became one of my favorites in the game. In the World 3 map screen, you can see some kind of layer which really caught my interest. At first, 
This level starts off like any other swamp level, making your way across branches, vines, and avoiding those annoying mosquito enemies. But eventually, you hit a point where you get to see the swamp beast itself, a large, awesome looking serpent. Now it becomes a chase as Sly needs to keep away from the snake, and this is where I fell in love with the level. By far, one of the biggest highlights of the game for me. Yep, my favorite level in the original Sly game is Boneyard Casino. This isn't a very hard level, but for me, it's the single best setting and does the most with it. You need to shut off some lights, jump around on some slot machines, dealer tables, and even roulette wheels while keeping out of sight of guards and avoiding lasers. There's even a special slot machine for Sly to activate and a large roulette wheel at the end. On top of all this, the colors in the level are so vibrant vibrant and blend together very, very well. For me, it doesn't get much better than this level, and I find it to be so much fun every time I replay it. Well, that's the list, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I won't be doing these too often, and to only really plan on doing more ranked videos on PS2 games, with the only exception being the first Ape Escape, but, you know, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to that. Some ideas I have are ranking the levels for the first Jack and Dexter, Klonoa 2, the Ratchet and Clank games, and boss rankings for games like Shadow of the Colossus. Keep in mind, I'll only be doing these videos on PS2 titles I enjoy and like to replay. Now, it might take a little longer for the next video to come out, as I plan on doing just a few small changes with this channel. So in the meantime, I'll let you all decide what the next PS2 game is that I'll be looking at from these three that I've selected here. First, we have Genji then Zapper, and finally, Stella Deus. I will be talking about all three of these games in the next few months anyway, but I'm simply curious as to which one you all want to see me talk about first. Until then, I'm MCB, and I'll see you guys next time.